All right, so um, I'm just gonna jump straight into this. Uh, I have a video uh, that I made in 2019 about me delivering pizza, and I got a very interesting comment. So let's um, let's check out this comment. I'm not gonna show it to you. I don't want to show the user's name, um, but I will read the comment to you. So. Uh, in response to my video, they say, hey, Adrian, I didn't watch the whole video, but here are my two cents. Dave Ramsey is a great place to start if one has never been taught anything about budgeting or being financially responsible with money. However, he never tells people to go down his path and start their own business, which he which is how he was able to make his millions. He never talks about multiple streams of income. I know tons of people that went into debt for a business and now they make millions. Not all debt is bad. I agree with a lot of points he makes, though. Having a car payment is stupid. Having a 30-year mortgage is stupid. Not having six months of expenses saved is stupid, etc. You need to take in the good and spit out the bad. Uh, they also mention um, some other guru they follow. But this is what caught my attention, right? This is the problem with how we think in the United States in general. This is the problem with Americans and our relationship with debt. They say, here is one story Dave Ramsey wouldn't approve of. This lady in Nashville was broke. She took 100000 in cash advances from her credit card and put it all towards a cupcake business. She's now a multi, multi-millionaire. Um, Dave thinks that everyone should invest for retirement. I'm of the opposite viewpoint. Everyone should invest in a business and become financially independent. All right. Let's cut the bullshit and get straight to the point. Entrepreneurship and owning a business is not for everyone, nor... Are those necessarily the best ways to achieve uh, financial independence, whatever financial independence means to you? Right. Personal finance is personal. It's subjective. It's not objective. Right. (laughs) Personal finance is is not set in stone. Now, let's just uh, let's just veer off onto this tangent that I really want to go off on. I don't understand why, as Americans, We are so fascinated with the idea that we can stack the odds against ourselves and still succeed. Right. So, for example, um, the first dream that's always sold is if you can't afford to go to school, take out student loans, go get your education, get the get the job, get the career. Right. Clearly, that has not worked at scale for millions of Americans. Right. Millions of us are carrying around student loan debt. This also applies to starting a business. Right. Taking out loans to start a business will not always work. Saving money (laughs) to start a business will not always work. So at the end of the day, I really just want to encourage everyone. You know, this is not a question about what or how. It's about why. Why, as Americans, have we just fucking accepted that We can go into debt for whatever the fuck we want with zero accountability. And that's the route that we want to take. Right. So to Americans, we've become so risk. You know, we've become so, you know, I guess we're the opposite of risk averse now. Right. Like all of these risks that we take on when we pick up debt, we're totally numb to. We totally skip past them. We really aren't talking about the the shitty sides of starting a business. Like if you want to be um, an entrepreneur, you're going to have to withhold 25 to 30 percent of your income just to pay taxes. Right. If you were working a nine to five, you fill out your W-4 or your W-2, whatever the fuck it's called once. And most of that shit is handled for you. You can use the IRS uh, tax withholding calculator if you really want to be like a stickler about it. You can't really do those things in entrepreneurship. You have to withhold a flat percentage of your income. Um, and, you know, it, that that is tough. It's, it's hard starting and maintaining a business. And I think that, you know, ultimately we need to stop praising the outliers. Right. Start praising the everyday millionaires. That's why I love Dave Ramsey. The people that follow the baby step are everyday millionaires. They're blue collar workers. They're middle class people. They're teachers. They're not, you know, fucking doctors, lawyers, basketball players. You know what I mean? Not to mention taking out loans and maxing out credit cards to start a cupcake business sounds ridiculous. You know what I mean? If we take a step back and we just say, all right, you know, my friend or family member is telling me they want to literally hedge the bet against themselves right they want to bet on themselves they want to go to school and take out a hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars in student loans to 
get a job and get a career and that's how they're going to pay back the loans or they want to go out and take out a business loan or they want to take out a HELOC, a line of credit on their home to fund a business. Right. If we're just speaking objectively, we've made things so much harder on ourselves because now we have to win. So ultimately, what I want to encourage people to do with this video is, you know, just start thinking about things like that a little bit more, regardless of where you are on your personal finance journey. You know, before we are so quick to say that, you know, not all debt is bad or I think everyone should have their own business and be financially independent or financially free. Like, let's seriously just take a step back and just ask yourself, OK, what are all the ways I can accomplish these goals or that I can attain this lifestyle that I'm looking for? And, you know, let me just think about the levels of difficulty that I'm that I'm getting myself into. So, yeah, you know, listen, there's there's tons of success stories online about people flipping houses, taking out half a million dollars in debt, flipping houses, becoming successful. Warren Buffett is notoriously successful for basically getting mortgages back in the fucking 70s and 80s and then selling the houses when they've gone up in value 10 or 20 years later. That shit is not going to happen for everybody. And we have to stop, you know, sharing those stories as if those are like something that we should be taking inspiration from. All of that stuff is bullshit. You need to find realistic ways to accomplish whichever goals you're trying to accomplish. And we need to stop putting debt at the forefront. Anyone can go out damn near and get a fucking loan or credit card of some kind to fund some idea. That doesn't mean that the business idea is valid. That doesn't mean that it's going to pan out or that it's going to work out well. Um, and that's really what I want to drive home here is to stop letting people sell you dreams, right? You have to do your own research, make up your own mind about this. And, you know, you really have to, you know, follow your own gut and take in all this advice and things that people are saying with a grain of salt. But one thing that I'm never going to be for is just saying, you know, I believe everyone should own their own business or everyone should be an entrepreneur or everyone should have a job or, you know, everyone should <laughs> have a car note or not have a car note. No, this is personal finance, right? I'm just here telling my story. You can do whatever the fuck you want with your money. I will respect it. I will always hope that things pan out for you. And I will always hope that, you know, in the long term, this pans out for your families generationally. That's the goal, right? It's all love. But I think as Americans, we, we just got to we got to stop praising the fucking outliers. Right. That, that's not the way we want to think about this. You know, praise the motherfucker that lives next door to you. That's living check to check and somehow has still been managing to take care of the household with like very little income. Those are the motherfuckers that amaze me. People that, you know, are my fucking neighbors that <laughs> are really dealing with real issues. Some of us, we get in, into consuming this content online and we get very mixed up and very inspired and motivated and, and you know, taken away by romanticizing all these ideas of entrepreneurship and ownership and whatever financial freedom means to us individually. So I know that I've been kind of rambling on, but hopefully um, y'all understand what I'm saying here. Just, you know, take all of this stuff with a grain of salt, right? You should be following the advice that works for the masses, not the advice that worked for fucking Michael Jordan or whatever woman the commenter was talking about in this story. Stop stacking the odds against yourself. Stop making shit harder for yourself. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. I'm out. Peace.